Hello friends, Namaskar. The importance and the prevalence of the UPI transaction is now known to one and all. In this understanding or with this understanding, I as on date find that many a people are using UPI as a successful medium of receiving the payments pertaining to their business, pertaining to their profession services or pertaining to their other services. A very important question which came in my mind that if you are receiving your business related payments through UPI, your profession services related payment through UPI, what other important points being an assessee, maybe from GST perspective, maybe from income tax perspective, you should take care of. So through this video, my dear friends, I am trying to put up all those points which are in my mind for the benefit of public at large. I am trying to put up my points by way of putting up questions before you and trying to sort out them by way of giving answers in a professional manner. The first question which came in my mind was, are you receiving payments in a UPI linked to a saving bank account or current bank account? Mind you, my dear friends, if my understanding is correct, every UPI is linked to a bank account. Now, either that bank account could be a saving bank account or it could be a current bank account. You may ask me, how does it differ if I receive in a UPI which is linked to my saving bank account or if I receive in a UPI related account which is a current bank account. Mind you, my dear friends, if you are conducting a business or a profession and you are receiving the payment pertaining to your business, say from your customers or say from your clients, ideally it should be received in a UPI which is linked to a current bank account. So I don't recommend that your UPI should be linked to a saving bank account. That is my first advice. However, some of you may suggest that Mr. Bhatia, my volume is not very high. So why do you restrict me from receiving in my UPI which is linked to a saving bank account? I would not restrict you, but I would suggest you that as I said, ideally your UPI in such a scenario should be linked to your current bank account. So that is a suggestion from my side because what happens that when your volume in saving bank account increases, then that kind of transaction is reported on a frequent basis to the income tax department by the relevant banker even as compared to those transactions which are undertaken in a current bank account. So that is a very important thing or advice which you may take care of for the purposes of receiving payments through UPI in an account which is linked to a current bank account rather than that linked to a saving bank account. The second question for the discussion is what is the volume of transactions undertaken? Yet I have uh, discussed this in my previous slide but I would again like, like to put up before you that if the volume of transactions is low that you say that it is minuscule then you may undertake the transactions in format of UPI related transactions in a saving bank account. But if the volume is increasing, you have to be cautious that the relevant transactions which you are receiving, the credits which you are receiving through UPI should be primarily in a UPI which is linked to a current bank account. This one is a very important discussion whether you have a GST registration number or not. You may say, how does it differ whether I have a GST registration or not? I would certainly suggest that, sir, as on date, we cannot skip the GST law, which is a very important point. And the GST has connectivity to your bank account. GST has a connectivity to your PAN account. The point which I am trying to raise here, say if somebody is receiving in his UPI linked saving bank account or UPI linked current account, say the amount which is exceeding the threshold limit of GST and he or she is not registered under GST, then you can understand that since the UPI transactions are always on that platform which is duly available for the authorities. So if you are exceeding your sales above 40 lakh in terms of selling goods or you are receiving services related payment through UPI above 20 lakh, and you don't have a GST registration, naturally it is going to create problem for you in future. So you should say or you should see that if you have UPI payments, recurring payments, which are probably exceeding the threshold limit 
provided under GST law for the goods or services as the case may be, you should ensure that you are duly obtaining your GST registration number so that tomorrow you don't fall into any kind of non-compliances on the GST law. Now, another question which came in my mind for suggestion is, are you filing ITR on regular basis? See, sometimes it happens, I have seen it happening, that people conduct business in the name, mostly in their own name, that is what I should assume, but I have seen that they are entering into UPI related payments with respect to their relatives, say maybe the wife, that is the spouse, or maybe the kids, who may be the at the age of 18 years or above. Now a question comes, when you are receiving the payments through UPI, maybe that UPI is linked to a saving account or maybe that UPI is linked to a current account. Whether you are duly reporting and this possibility of uh, higher side possibilities, you are receiving UPI related payment of your business or profession, which is linked to a UPI, which is linked to a saving bank account. Are you ensuring that ITR of yourself or such person is duly filed? and such transactions related profit are duly reported there. That is a very, very important point because nowadays if you go into your annual information statement, you may find that probably the bank would report that so much of credit is there in this account. And if you are undertaking those transactions into a saving bank account, what will happen? Say somebody received 8 lakh rupees through UPI. Might be that he or she has incurred certain expenditure for the same and you are not filing ITR of such recipient, then what will happen? Tomorrow income tax department may straight away presume that 8 lakh is your income which you are not reporting in the ITR. That is something really very dangerous. So I suggest that the ITR filing of such account in which you are receiving the UPI related payment of your business or profession should be duly ensured. To end my dear friends, I must suggest that these questions are generally made up for the purposes of those assessees, those people who are undertaking business transaction related receipt, profession transaction related receipts in their UPI format from their clients or from their customer. So if they don't take care of these points, then probably they will end up into non-compliances on the part of the GST law or on the part of the income tax law. So I try to create an awareness which may be useful to the public at large. I hope you will find it worth watching. Thank you very much for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.